In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how gross revenue is not the same as profitability. <laughs> All right, I still don't have a new intro, so if you still want to get into the free drawing for this free 30-minute call with me about what my new YouTube intro should sound like, what do you want me to say, put in the comment section. This will probably be the last video that we have without a new intro. But for now, I'm Mike Claudio, owner of Winner Consulting and host of the Big Stud Podcast. Um, look. There's not a single business owner you're gonna to talk to, that, at least that I'm aware of, at an event or at a networking thing or at a breakfast or lunch or mastermind or anything that's gonna start bragging to you about their net profit. Most are gonna talk about their gross revenue. And I've even talked about it in celebration of my clients in these previous videos, you know, kind of telling stories about successes inside our organization about gross revenue. How much money did you collect? is not the same as how much money you have. And a lot of times I think people get distracted by big numbers like, oh, we did 10 million this year, but you don't hear them talking about how many problems they had or how many much money they lost or how much revenue or, or profit they actually kept. They just talk about their gross number, their gross revenue number. And so we had a client that joined us at the beginning of 2022. Um, I met him through another, another networking um, event and he was in this position of like, had grown a company pretty quickly, had done multi, you know, multiple seven figures, felt like a badass, and then got hit with a ton of bricks, realizing that revenue was not the same as profit, and you know, realized he was leaking a lot of money. It wasn't just one client, it was multiple clients that came to me with massive success revenue-wise by you know success being relative to a growth of revenue in 2021 right so like big numbers multiple seven figures you know three four five six million dollars in revenue where they went from like one million to three million to five million to six million like big growth quickly and they were they were proud of themselves until they realized at the end of the year that the bank accounts were still empty they still owed people money they still weren't paying themselves and that can be a really demoralizing realization as a business owner where you're like I'm seeing checks come in, I'm seeing sales happening, I'm seeing, seeing us hiring, I'm feeling success, but there's never any money in the bank account and I still can't find a way to pay myself what I wanna make. Well, then you have a profit issue. And so what I wanna really get across in this video is, it is incredibly okay, if not necessary, to intentionally have some years where you do less revenue but have more money left over. What's common in a scaling company is to grow your company, you have to accept lower profit seasons sometimes because you have to buy equipment, you have to hire people, you have to buy new technology, you have to get new apps, you gotta invest more into locations or a building or you know an equipment yard or whatever. Like To grow, you have to invest to grow, which means in that season, some of the ROI on that investment might come in future years but you have to spend the money now. So it's a lower profit year. But what, what a lot of younger, when I say like younger business owners, not young in age, but new to business ownership, is they see growth as success, but growth requires investment and they're not tracking the investments appropriately. They're just spending the money because it feels right, seems right. And I'm sure individually, each of those ideas that they were investing for growth in made a lot of sense individually, but they weren't doing a good job looking at all things unilaterally. How does this decision play into the overarching machine? Well, beginning of 2022, this, this client came in, you know, confused, lost, frustrated, beat up, demoralized as to why he could just not find money, even though he was winning, quote unquote, due to a lot of different variables that people measure from success, i.e. business size, clients, project size, revenue numbers, all these things. That's part of it. But what you have to do sometimes is take a, a season or a year and say, we need to focus on profit. Well, focusing on profit, keeping money, means you're investing less, which means you might see different gross results, right? That top line revenue. You might see a lower amount of, in, of revenue, but a higher amount of income, net operating income, the money left over after everything's paid for because you have to buy less, you have to spend less, you have to market less, you have to fire some people, which slows some things down. You have to get intentional with how you're spending on marketing dollars. And so all those things help you keep more profit, but can stunt revenue growth, but that has to happen. 
It absolutely has to happen. Not only does it have to happen from that perspective, but it has to continually analyze. And so what happened at the end of 2022, he realized a pretty flat year from revenue growth, but realized he still had some, some gaps in the process. And he's had to start looking at the services he offered. Even I've done this at WinRate, I've helped clients do this, is like, you know, you think more services, more money, more money. No, more services tend to mean more lessons and more lessons tend to mean more money lost. And even though you're doing more work and you're helping more people and you're doing more services, a lot of times the profit from one service or the, will, will, will hide losses in other parts, if that makes sense. So you'll see one side where you have hey, we're winning here, but over here losing, but they offset, so you still feel like you're making some money, so you must be winning across the board. Sometimes you have to stop, which is what we did with this with this client, who's still a client, has become a coach, but we looked at, okay, kitchens, bathrooms, remodels, big size, small size, where are we actually making money, but ultimately, where are we losing money? Because sometimes you have to say no to some revenue because you have just not found a way to do that type of service profitably. So helping diagnose these situations, having these conversations, helping him see some things objectively, looking at the machine without emotion, because it's not my machine, just saying, look, man, as much as you love doing that and as cool as you think it is, and as much revenue as you think you're collecting, you are not able to execute those types of projects profitably, which is destroying how much you're winning in these other services. So if you're not doing that, if you're looking at just revenue growth as the only win, you gotta start looking at your profits across the board. But you also need to look at individual service types, individual product offerings, individual parts of your company to say, are we profitable on those projects? So job costing is incredibly necessary. We're not gonna dive into that, but understanding on every individual project, did we make money or not, will help you analyze the variables so that you can make intentional decisions going forward to prioritize profit over revenue. Because it doesn't matter how much revenue you do, if you don't have money left over to pay yourself every month, you still broke. So I'd rather you do a little bit less revenue, not have to brag about how you did 10 million this year, you only did six, but you, instead of only making a hundred grand, you made 250 grand. That's a win. That's a win in my book because no one's in business to just be constantly chasing debt or constantly chasing mistakes or constantly chasing catching up from things. Sometimes you need to prioritize profit, take a stabilizing year and really get intentional with what you're doing where and focusing on getting rid of some services, prioritizing profits, making sure you're investing correctly, pulling back on some growth, actually being willing to accept less revenue to prioritize leftovers, the money that actually gives you the lifestyle you want. So if you're stuck in that rat race, if you're stuck in that chasing your tail, if you're stuck constantly trying to figure out why you have no money left over in your bank account, it could be because you are not analyzing profit on a per project base specifically. So if you need help with that, we have people on the win rate team who can help you. Go to winrateconsulting.com, go to myclaudio.com, go to at winrateconsulting on Instagram to check out myself and our coaches because we want to help you solve these problems so that you can win fast and win often. Oh, 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 oh,